Hi there, welcome to Jujube DIY. I'm Sarah, thanks for stopping by. Today I'm participating in an open collaboration with a Hocus Pocus theme. I've created some fun Halloween DIY, so stay tuned to see what I've made. For our first DIY, we're gonna make some tassels. I have this tassel maker that uh, somebody gave me a long time ago, and so I figured I might as well use it. But you can make tassels easily without one of these. Just grab anything that you can wrap your yarn around however many times you want to make a however thick of a tassel you want. So I'm just gonna wrap this around. I don't even know how many times. I just kind of went until I thought it looked good. So I'm just gonna cut off a piece of yarn here and it's gonna tie around that top kind of portion area to create the tassel. So this DIY is my one and only nod to the movie Hocus Pocus. The rest of my DIYs today take on a more of a vintage Halloween vibe. But I do like this movie and thought it was pretty fun. And since I wanted to, have you know a hocus pocus diy this is my hocus pocus diy so we're just gonna finish off this tassel i'm just weaving through another piece of yarn just to tie it off and have the very top of the tassel here and i'm going to keep these yarn strands long because i'm going to eventually uh, thread some beads on them so I'm going to do a tassel in the purple, a tassel in green, and a tassel in red. And these tassels are going to represent each of the Sanderson sisters from the movie. So we're going to create our heads for our Sanderson sisters. I'm taking 25 millimeter beads and for this first one some Waverly chalk paint in the color ink. Starting off I'm going to do a little couple of little curly cues on each side of the bead and this is Mary's hair so we're going to kind of create those little curls on the sides of her face and then we're going to paint the side in the back of the bead with the black paint. So I have to apologize profusely to you guys. I am so very sorry, but for some reason, my camera tripod got moved and I didn't realize it. So I went to go set up my camera and it, I'm out of frame quite a bit. <laughs> there wasn't really anything I could do about it. Um, I didn't realize it until I was already editing and I really wanted to keep this this DIY in here for you guys because I, I thought it was such a fun and cute DIY and I really wanted to share it with you. So I apologize. I will try and talk you through the best I can as to what I was doing. Um, so for this, this is Winifred. I painted a, like a half heart. I wanted that widow's peak in the front to kind of come down in the orange color. And then I did the sides and the back of the bead in the orange as well. So now I'm going to thread the beads onto each of the tassels. And for Sarah's hair, we, or for Sarah's head, we just left that plain. There was no need to paint anything. So I'm gonna take some embroidery. Oh wait, I'm doing some beads. So these are like small, maybe six millimeter beads. And I glued two on each side of Winifred's head. And then I'm just gonna thread one on top of Mary's hair. And then I did clip off the extra yarn that I thread the beads through and I just kind of hot glued those down because we're going to cover the heads up with embroidery floss. So for Mary, I just started at the bottom, used some hot glue and I just kept winding around and around her head until I got up to the top of the small bead. And then I just used a little bit of hot glue to kind of push it out a little bit to create that little you know how her hair kind of goes up in a little curl up at the top. And then with Winifred, I used orange embroidery floss and I started around the small beads and I did both of those first and then I wrapped her head and then just kind of kept going around. So just using some hot glue to secure along the way. 
For Sarah's hair, I just used long strands of yellow embroidery floss, and I'm just gonna glue those straight down the middle of the bead. So her hair is very easy, and they're all very easy. You just kind of wrap and glue, and that's really all there is to it. So you could use embroidery floss, or you could use yarn for this as well. It wouldn't have to be embroidery floss. So I cut this SVG out on my Cricut, using an SVG that I found at Creative Fabrica, which I will talk to you more about here in a little bit. I grabbed this picture from the Dollar Tree. I took all the paper off of it and sanded it down to create as smooth a surface as I possibly could. And then I'm gonna give it a coat of Waverly chalk paint in the color white. Next, we're gonna take the Waverly chalk paint in the color mineral and a dry chippy brush. And I'm just going to dry brush this color right onto the white. And just make sure that you use long um, strokes and just try to go from top to bottom as straight as you can. And that'll give it that weathered look. All right, so I put my decal onto my transfer tape. And when you're doing vinyl, the best way to get your vinyl off of your backing is to do it like you see me there. So you're pulling that backing away from your um, transfer sheet. And then I'm just gonna put this right onto my sign towards the top here. So I didn't like the frame, the color it was. So I decided to paint it in the ink. So I just gave that a coat and then I put my picture back into the frame here. And I'm gonna bring my little Sanderson sister tassels um, up and I'm gonna kind of place them where I want them to go. I just love how these turned out. I think that they're very cute. Maybe just turn the ends off if you need to. So here's a look at the final product. I love it. I've already said that and I think it is totally cute and my girls thought it was adorable too. So today I am taking part in an open collaboration called Hocus Pocus. It is hosted by my good friend Devin over at Freckled Mom and my friend Ellie over at DIY from House to Home. If you have not checked out either of their channels, I will leave both of them in the description box down below along with today's playlist. Moving on to our next DIY, I'm gonna take this paper pad that I bought from Michaels last year. They always have these kinds of paper pads at Michaels, so fear not. You should be able to buy one. And I'm just gonna pick out some of the paper. So we're going to do some scoring. And I was just showing you that you can use a ruler and a scoring tool just to make these score marks. However, I'm gonna use my scoreboard because I have it and it is a lot quicker and easier. So I'm doing score marks at a quarter inch increments. So I'm going from top to bottom on these eight by eight papers because I'm gonna use all this paper. <laughs> and I don't know if you can see that or not, but there are marks there that show me where I'm gonna fold. Next, I'm gonna take my trimmer. Again, you don't need a trimmer. You can just use your scissors. And I'm going to cut against your score marks. So you want your score marks 
to be in a horizontal position while you're cutting in a vertical position, if that makes any sense. So you're gonna have, a, you know, score marks horizontally from your top to bottom. And I'm cutting two lengths out at one and a half and two lengths out at one inch. So if you have 12 inch paper, you wouldn't need to do two pieces, but because these are eight inch pieces, I needed to do two of them so that I could put them together. Next, we're going to fold on our score marks. So basically, we're just gonna be going back and forth in like an accordion fashion. So you fold forward, backward, forward, backward, kind of like if you ever made like a paper fan when you were a kid, you're just gonna keep doing that and you're gonna go all the way from top to bottom. And you'll do that to all your strips. And here I am just showing you a closer look at what we're doing. It's just that back and forth folding. Now, once I got them done, I needed to put two of them together because like I said, my, my papers were a little bit shorter in length. So I'm just gonna hot glue those together. And like I said, if you have 12 by 12 inch paper, you won't need to do this. And these are such a fun way to decorate. You could use these paper rosettes in so many different places. You can do banners and just all kinds of really fun stuff. I love making paper rosettes. So I needed to have two, you have to have two circles for each of your rosettes, one for the front, one for the back. So I use my paper punch, but if you don't have a paper punch, just find something round and trace it out and then cut it out with your scissors. Next, we're going to create our rosettes. We're going to hot glue the like the front and the bottom or the top and the bottom together to create a circle. <laughs> As you can see here, it just we're going to connect them together to create a circle, basically. And then once you kind of lay it out, you just kind of plop it down and you've got your rosette. Isn't that so cute? So taking a bit of hot glue, and this can be handy if you have like an extra pair of hands to help you, but just kind of pinch it together so that your um, rosette is a little closer in the middle there. And then taking that circle, you're just gonna hot glue that um, to cover up that circle area and to keep your rosette flat and in the right position. And you'll do that to the front and back of each of your rosettes. The nice thing about this paper is that it's double-sided, so it doesn't matter which side you look at, it's pretty. So I printed off these adorable vintage pictures from a Creative Fabrica artist. So they had them all set up for me. I downloaded the, um, I downloaded it and it's got multiple sizes of circles. So I cut them at, or I printed them at one and a half inch circles. And then I'm just gonna cut those out by hand using some Distress Oxide inks in the color Vintage Photo. I'm gonna go around all of the pictures, like the little circles here that I cut out. And then I'm gonna go around all of my rosettes as well, just to make them look aged. So I was going for a vintage vibe and I feel like the Vintage Photo really gives that vintage vibe. You don't have to use the vintage photo. Obviously, you could dry brush with a light brown paint if you wanted to, but I really love the way that the Distress Oxides look and how they can make things look a little more vintage. So here's a closer look at each of the rosettes. They so cute. I just love the look of rosettes. I think they're just really super cute. And I just put them on some twine and made a garland out of them but you could do all kinds of fun things with these. Put them on bags or wherever you want. Today's video is sponsored by Creative Fabrica. I've been having so much fun with this website. You can access thousands and thousands, and I mean thousands of fonts and SVGs and graphics and PNGs and JPEGs and all kinds of other projects to or products to enhance your creativity and your projects. 
With Creative Fabrica, you can purchase individual products. So if you just wanna purchase one SVG, you can do that. Or you can join the different memberships that they have available. Um, right now, my subscribers can try Creative Fabrica for $1 for an entire month. That gives you access to everything that Creative Fabrica has to offer. They have classes, they've got patterns, they've got all kinds of stuff. So I will leave a link in my description box down below where you can get that deal. And then it renews at $19 a month, which is still a fantastic deal, especially if you are using this stuff to sell because with each of the items that you purchase from Creative Fabrica or with your membership, you get a product license with it, which means you can use that without having to pay a licensing fee. So that's awesome. They have all kinds of stuff. So I definitely think you should check them out and you'll see me using a bunch of their stuff for today's projects. So for this project, I made a two inch rosette. So I don't know if I mentioned this before, but however, so if you cut your paper at one and a half inches, then you're gonna have a three inch rosette, right? Because a half inch is your diameter. So if you have a one inch, if you cut your strips at one inch, then you're gonna have a two inch rosette, which is what this one is. So I'm taking this little witch hat that I got from the Dollar Tree and I'm just gonna cover this with paper. And I'm adhering this with a basic glue stick. This is actually a craft glue stick from Elmer's. Um, I couldn't get <laughs> there out of my Gorilla glue stick, which I really like. I have not had a lot of luck with the school glue sticks staying long term, but um, this one does pretty good. So I, I cut around the outside of my hat and now I'm just using some of that Distress Oxide to go around the edges just to make it look a little more vintage because today's projects are going for that kind of vintage -y vibe. Next, I'm gonna add um, some ribbon. <laughs> I'm like, what is that? It's ribbon. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. Hello, Sarah. You've got it right. Okay, so we're gonna just add some of this orange ribbon from the Dollar Tree. It's just that um, sheer orange ribbon that you can buy. I think pretty much year round anymore they carry this. So I put this layer down and then I'm gonna go over the top with a layer of this black that I bought from Michaels. And then we're just gonna add here our rosette on top. I had this stamp set that I bought at Michael's last year and this one says happy haunting. So I'm gonna use my Ranger archival ink in the color black. And I'm gonna stamp this onto my piece here. That's kind of the nice thing about using paper to cover up things is that you can stamp on top of it and it works really well. So in the same st stamp set were these little stars and I thought that they would look really cute also on this hat. So I'm just going to stamp these little stars on here in just random areas. No rhyme or reason really. And I was trying to figure out whether I could get one there or not, but I couldn't. So <laughs> probably should have stamped it before I put the rosette on, but you know, whatever. It was kind of an afterthought. Now I'm just going to go in with whatever was left on that little sponge brush and just kind of dirty up the inside there and just to make it look a little more vintage. So here's a look at how this turned out. We're going to move right along. I'm taking one of these galvanized houses from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to cover it with this. It's kind of a deep purple polka dot paper and I've just kind of had this in my stash, but any paper you like would work perfectly for this project. So again, using the glue stick, I'm gonna adhere the paper to the metal house. And then I'll go around the outside edge with my um, sandpaper just to get that extra paper off. I think that works the best. And then I do go in the inside too with that same technique of using the sandpaper, but I'm not gonna show you that today. So and then I went around the outside edge with my uh, Distress Oxide ink just to make it look a little more vintage. And then I cut down some popsicle sticks that I'm going to place 
on the top of the house to create a little roof line. And I'm just gonna use some hot glue to do this. So as you know, hot glue and metal don't really work that well together, but these are holding pretty well because the front side, see I'm gonna go in to, along the edge there with the glue, but because there's some paper there, it's the paper and the wood are adhering. Next I took the Hobby, no, the Hello Hobby chalk paint in the color Cafe Noir, and I painted everything with that color, all the wood. This is an ephemera pack that I purchased or got from my All Access. So it was free because I'm in the All Access. Um, this is an ephemera pack. So you can use this with your junk journaling, with your regular journaling. This set is so cute. The creator did such a fabulous job making these really cute pieces that would look awesome in all kinds of different places. So I'm gonna create, I'm gonna use this picture here, which was one of the little cards that you could print off. And I just used my inkjet printer. I don't have anything fancy, guys. It's like a cheap HP. And I just used some regular paper to print this out and it worked so good. So I'm just going to put some hot, not hot glue, some <laughs> glue stick on the back of my house so that I can put my picture poking through, you know, like peeking through, I guess. <laughs> I found this pom-pom ribbon at the Dollar Tree. It is with the Christmas stuff and it was really cute. So I thought it would look really cute on my house and it kind of reminded me of that vintage vibe. Although a lime green color probably would have been awesome, but all I had was white. <laughs> so I'm gonna do white with this pom-pom ribbon and I'm just gonna glue that right to those craft sticks that I used to create that roof line. And I apologize if you can hear my cat. She is on the other side of my bedroom door, which is where I'm doing my voiceover, and she thinks she needs to come in here. So this is ribbon that I've had in my stash. It must have some wire in it because it was like um, conforming to the shape that I was making really easily but it's just some sort of a trim ribbon trim that I've had in my stash so you could use I mean you could use anything like you could even use uh, pipe cleaners for this and it would look pretty co cool like it would definitely give off that vintage vibe then I found these stickers that I had from uh, the Dollar Tree this year and I found this bat I thought it would go cute up there at the top. It kind of covers up my seam there and then a little cat. So this was a really super easy project and I think it's really cute. Moving right along, we're going to use one of these foam pumpkins from the Dollar Tree. And of course, I'm not going to keep this bright orange color. <laughs> so I'm gonna take off this green stem. We don't need that anymore. We're gonna get rid of it. And then I'm going to give this a couple of coats of this um, paint. This is an orange paint from Folk Art that I've actually mixed in with a little bit of burnt umber. So it gives it a warm orange color. So I painted that pumpkin, then I made a cone, and then I did uh, another one of these rosettes using three strips of paper, and I cut them at three inches. So the diameter, or the rosette itself is six inches. Next, I just drew on a little face. This was inspired by a Pinterest uh, picture that I saw, and so I kind of copied what I saw there with this face. <laughs> He's so cute, I love it. And I did take three coats of paint to cover all that bright orange color. <laughs> but I think it was worth it because I love the color that this turned out. So again, I'm just using a thin paintbrush and I've had a couple people ask me about my what paintbrushes I use. And to be honest, I have a giant collection of paintbrushes. I have no idea really where anything has come from. I know that's so bad. Um, I've gotten some of my stuff from Walmart, some of it from 
Michaels. So probably a good majority of my paintbrushes come from Walmart or Michaels. Um, just because those are the two places that I get a lot of my craft supplies. They're closer to me. Um, but pretty much any kind of a detail brush that you can find. I use synthetic fibers just because I am hard on my paint brushes. So I know I'll probably just be purchasing new ones soon. So I usually go with a cheaper synthetic paintbrush. <laughs> so I glued his hat on and then I glued the pumpkin to the rosette and then I placed a smaller rosette on the very top of the hat. And then I'm just adding a little bow here. And here you can see. And here is a look at how he turned out. I put him on a candlestick. So I think that was a really cute idea. And I love how he turned out. He is like probably my favorite. So let me know in the comments down below, which was your favorite from today. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate that you took time out of your day to spend with me. Make sure you check out today's playlist. Check out Ellie and Devin's channel. You won't be disappointed. They are fabulous creators. And I hope you have a fabulous and wonderful day. I will talk to you next time. Bye.